Monsters and robots are broken hearted. Oh, that was so bad. Oh, I suck at singing. I don't even know why I sing sometimes on here. Okay, day 81. Day 81. Suboxin withdrawal. Here we go. All right. Robots or monsters and robots are broken hearted, though. Believe me. Trust me. I know. Okay. Guess what I did today? I hiked 16 miles. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I worked all day. I ran three miles on my lunch, though. <laughs> three miles on my lunch. That's a victory. A victory. Victory. Yeah. Three miles, though. Sucked. Sucked. Once I got going, though, it wasn't too bad. Yesterday, dude, yesterday was just like the hardest two miles I've ran in a long time. It was so hard. I did not have any energy yesterday. Oh, man. Um, but, uh, yeah. You know what, though? Something real quick. Something real quick. Because you sneeze a lot when you go through this. I just got to tell you, okay, I am, you know, everyone's like, bless you, bless you, bless you. Well, I never, I never say bless you when someone sneezes. I never, I don't even think about it. Like, it's just like, I don't really care. Like, I, I don't know. I don't subscribe. I'm not a conformist now, <laughs> but I just, you know, my wife thinks it's rude. I mean, is that rude? Like, does it, with if I, if you were hanging out and you sneeze and I didn't say bless you, would you be offended? <laughs> I mean, like, so I asked my boss, like, are you offended if, if no one says bless you? And he's like, no, I don't care. Well, come to find out. I was talking to another guy at work, a good Christian guy, by the way. I don't know. I have to say that because we're talking about like blessing or something, but, but seriously, he actually told me, he came back. He's like, you know, Gabe, I don't like it when people <laughs> say bless you either. And, uh, and it wasn't that I don't like it. I just, well, I mean, I'm kind of at the point though. It's like, if you don't say it, like I'd kind of rather just, you know, like I'm about ready to like curse people when they, when they, you know, you know, it's sneeze I'll be like damn you this show but no but seriously he told me you know what he told me he's like when I have to sneeze <laughs> he goes and hides and sneezes and <laughs> says bless you I'm gonna start doing that too I'm gonna start hiding although I can't always because you have these sneezing fits but I thought that was hilarious that is so funny that is so freaking funny that he goes and he hides when he has to sneeze so just so no one will say bless you to him that's awesome like seriously anyway okay i just had to i don't know i don't think it's rude if i don't say bless you like serious like seriously who gives a crap like it's a sneeze i think it came around in the black death or the black plague like people would sneeze and they they go god bless you because you're probably gonna die or you know what i mean I, that's what i heard i don't even know if it's true so i shouldn't even be spouting that off okay here we go here we go. Another solid night of sleep, though. Seriously, dude, that has been fantastic. You know, I, again, I'm skeptical. We're, we're you know, we're, what, day 81, you know, coming up on the cycle of, you know, we got the 30, 69, 90 cycles coming up. I'm sure it'll all go to crap here pretty soon, but, but, but whatever. I'm sure when, if it goes to crap, it won't be as, as crappy as it was. Uh, but I'm taking that solid sleep, but you got to get used to not feeling super great, but not feeling like complete crap though too. Like you're just, you're not yourself. You're kind of just, you know, you got to get used to that. It's not going to just lift all at once. Okay. I know I say this stuff all the time. I know this, but you just, you, you know, it, it's just part of it. Like you, you got to get used to that kind of in between that, you know, recovery purgatory, or I don't know what, what you want to call it, what the great thing would be to call that. But, but, but then, and, and then, yes, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna kind of be in that purgatory, but then you got to take, you're going to have ups and then you're going to have downs. Okay. The ups are not going to be very long and the downs, eh, they seem like they're a little bit longer than the ups, but whatever, that's okay. Because, because seriously, the up, when we're all done with this, the up is going to be great. Like we're going to just be, we're going to be up for the rest of our life. I'm not saying everything in life, once you get past opium, you never have problems in life anymore and you never have bad feelings or, you know, you know what I'm saying, but you got to learn to deal with that crap that you got to, we have to learn to deal with life. Okay. That's the thing too, is like, that's why like going through this and working through this, like I know rehab is the most successful thing, but you know, doing it this way, we like, it's, it, you're, you're learning to deal with life. You know, you're during, learning to do, you're learning, you're dealing with life, going through this crap, this hell, you know, it's like, so like that, whatever. And when you get on the other side, it's going to be a piece of cake, man. You're going to be confident. I'm going to be confident. Who knows? I'll probably go, um, 
I'll probably start my own uh, landscaping business or something. No, sorry. <laughs> I don't even know. Anyway, okay, I don't know why I said that. I just saw grass there, and I was like, mowing a lawn. Okay, here we go. Dude, seriously eating like a, I don't know, a hippo or I don't, what, I don't know, what eats a lot? Like a cow? I mean, I know people say you eat like a cow. I mean, I don't know, like seriously, what, what animal does eat the most? I mean, I know like certain little stats, like, dude, you never believe, like, what animal has the most testosterone? Anyone take a guess? The bull shark. No joke. Seriously, no joke. Things got, that's why they're so freaking dangerous, dude. Okay, anyway, I'm sorry. This is so random. Wasting time as usual. But seriously, dude, you just eat like freaking crazy. I have to watch. I'm always eating like nuts and jerky and meat and cheese and salad and stuff and fruit and, and whatever. And anyway, okay. And also, I wanted to say sorry for the terrible reading at the in, at last night's video, at the end of last night's video. That was terrible. I was so tired. I wasn't prepared. I looked like an idiot. I was kind of embarrassed when I watched it. I, I had to see how I even, you know, it just was terrible. I apologize. Hopefully it doesn't get that bad tonight because who knows? It probably will. Um, anyway, okay. But a guy asked me, what has been the hardest week that I've gone through? A guy asked me this the other day. Um, good guy. He's freaking, dude, he's doing a heck of a good job. He's getting ready. He's getting ready to go for it too here pretty soon. He's, he's tapering down. He's been, he, he's been, he's been doing a great job. But anyway, uh, what has been the hardest week or the hardest part, you know, and, and that was, it was kind of hard for me to answer in, in some ways. I mean, I still stand by the hardest so far. I'm at day 81 right now. The hardest so far, the first 12 days or so that, I mean, because I had that off. Like if I was working, I mean, that sucked. I mean, that's when you're feeling the most symptoms. That's when you're, re you're not sleeping good at all. You have, you're just, and the, dude, you are just so, so exhausted. Okay. But having said that, when you get back to work, you know, there's some other elements that, that, that makes it hard or, or, or you kind of get what I'm saying? I mean, I still kind of stand, I do still stand by like the first 12 days, but like, or maybe it was like day five to 12 or would be the hardest week or, you know, but then there's the times when you get in the day forties and even into the fifties or something. And if you go on a stretch where you, cause you're not, you never catch up on your sleep. You just, you know, you can get a night a, a night's worth of sleep, but you know, you don't catch up. You're not going to catch up for a long while probably. And, uh, or yeah, not probably. That's just true. I, I mean, everyone's different, but, but, um, but there's a time in the forties or the fifties or whatever, maybe even in the sixties. I don't even, I don't even remember, dude. I don't even remember, but I was losing my flipping mind. You guys, I was losing my mind. And that is hard. Like a lot of people say the hardest part is the depression, the anxiety, and then just like the lack of sleep, not catching up on sleep and stuff. That's where a lot of people fall off. So, I mean, that's hard in its own way, but I, I still stand by like the fur, you know what I mean? It, it's in the beginning, the first couple weeks, you know, are, are rough. Like if you had to work and stuff through that, like that would be rough, but, um, you know, but then you, you kind of get through that and things get better, but just don't let, you know, don't have false expectations too. like under, just understand it's a long haul and you're going to have ups and downs and you'll be fine. Trust in God, do it his way and you will be fine. I, I dude, if you, if you fully do it God's way, I will, I, you'll, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. And don't take my word for it. Take God's word for it, baby. All right. I, okay, here we go. War, baby. We're surviving the war, baby. This is a war. We're surviving the war. We're pushing along. You know, this is spiritual warfare. This is flesh war. I mean, we, we're doing it all, man. We're, 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 everything's coming in at all these different angles right now, but let's, let's not forget, dude. Okay, here we go. The armor, the armor of God. Okay. Seriously. Okay. But, but seriously, like if we're going to, if we're going to survive this long war, we got to do it. We, we, we better listen up to what the Bible says. We better do it God's way. Okay. But listen to this. Okay. Here we go. I know I've read this before, but I'm going to read it again because who knows, who knows what day I read this on? I don't even know, dude. These, I make so many videos and they're just day, whatever. I have no idea the topic that I talked about or whatever. I guess the topic's always detox and God and running and food and maybe sometimes something random like hippos and saying bless you when you sneeze and whatever or bull sharks yeah we talked about having testosterone okay anyway okay all right here we go armor of god here we go 
I'm going to read a little bit more. So Paul writes this to the church of Ephesus. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Okay. Put on the full armor of God that so, so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. That's kind of like what that world... You know, well, we know what's going on, dude. There's a there's a demonic realm, okay? It's not necessarily all these, like, ah, scary monsters. Like, no, they, dude, these are, like, angels of light that can are deceptive and, you know, that are evil, though. They're evil. They're spirit, man. They're evil, okay? They're not... Anyway, okay, here we go. I'm sorry, and then I get off. Okay, therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in this in this evil day. And having done everything to stand firm, okay? Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth. We got to, you got to start with truth. You got to gird your loins with, if you don't have truth, you don't have bearings on anything. You're just, you're like the waves being tossed up in the ocean. You're double-minded. You got to have truth. And I'm saying this from experience, dude. I was such a double-minded man. I'd kind of this and then kind of you got to gird your loins with truth. That is what is going to get, dude. And I'm not just talking about this. I'm talking about getting through this life, okay? You and then Paul, yeah, Paul's not writing this for people like going through opium withdrawal. Only this is life. Life is freaking hard. If it's not hard yet, like I said this yesterday, it's going to get hard. Trust me, okay? Okay, here we go. So we got to gird gird your loins with truth. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness that protects your heart. Okay, so righteousness, righteous living is protecting your heart. Okay, Um, okay. Sorry, I'm getting a little pumped up here. Okay, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, which is like fitted your feet, like you're 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 ready. Your feet are ready. You're ready to go. You're ready to go preach the gospel of of peace. You're ready to. You know what I mean? You you know. So we got you got to be ready. You got to be ready to go on the offensive, baby. In addition to all. Taking up the shield of faith, okay, shield of faith, which with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows, arrows of the evil one, okay. That shield of faith, that faith, that girding ourselves with truth, and having that shield of faith, baby, uh, dude, we're gonna be able, we're because the, the, having faith. You know the devil puts thing in your mind. In your mind, he put he'll put he'll put thoughts in your mind like, oh, you know you I don't know you can't do you can't how why did you think you could possibly do this? Sure, he could do it or this person could do it, but you can't do it. You have to work. You have to, this for your job or you got to do this or no, that's a bunch of crap. You have faith in God. With God, we can accomplish all things. All things are possible with God. So don't have that. That shield of faith. Seriously, you have that faith as your shield. You'll you'll extinguish all that crap from from the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation, baby. Bam! We are, dude. That salvation, baby. Helmet of salvation, because God is gonna redeem duties. We're doing it God's way, dude. And and then okay, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That sword coming right out of our mouth, baby. The off- offensive weapon, dude. We're ready with our feet. We're ready. We're all spry. We're like, ha ha. We're in a defensive stance now. <laughs> Breakdown defense. Okay, here we go. But but ser- but seriously, no, no. In all seriousness, though, seriously, seriously, uh, you know, I'm not gonna go on all that because this is gonna get too long. As always, dude, isn't that funny? I always am like, oh man, this is getting too long, or this is too long, and then they just get longer and longer and longer. I apologize. I'm sorry if people don't like that. If I really gotta snip these up a little bit better, I'll try. It won't work though anyway. So you're just wasting your time if you tell me to. But most people, I've, I've gotten good feedback. Like they don't mind. So whatever. Okay. But seriously though, put on that armor of God. Seriously, seriously, seriously. And you gotta stay in the Word of God, baby. That's where the stuff gets in your heart, man. The, your faith comes through hearing, and you know I've said that a million times. Faith comes through hearing, and 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 uh, hearing comes through every Word of God. So let's do it God's way, not our own way. And seriously, I'm telling you right now, like. Dude, if I wasn't, if I wasn't doing it God's way, right, like I would have already failed. I would have already failed, at least, at least in, in many aspects, okay? I, I, I would have, and I'm not saying if you take Kratom, you have failed. I'm not saying that at all. I don't I don't mean to say it, but I, I would have, I would have, I'd be on Kratom again, and I, I, I would just... I'd be doing it Gabe's way and I'd be messing up and I, you know, because then I'd get on Kratom and then you have to get off that. And then, then I'd be get trying to get off that and that would be hard. And then I'd probably want to, oh, maybe I'll go to my doctor and get on like a really, really low dose. 
And it's like, it's so stupid. Don't listen to the lies of yourself. Like, well, maybe I just need to be on a low dose. Well, maybe you're just giving up on life. No, I don't mean that in a bad way. But don't give up on life. Don't give in to that crap. I hear so many people say that. And it's like, no, no, you don't need to be on a low dose. Like, you don't. You can do it, you guys. With God, you, anything's possible. Okay, here we go. So let, let's do it God's way. Let's abide. Let's do it God's way. Okay. But the, here's, okay, here we go. First John 3, 13 through 21, baby. Do not be surprised, brethren, if the world hates you. And Jesus said that too. When the world hates you, he said, remember, it hated me first, okay? He was the first, well, Christian or whatever you want to, I mean, like he died for, I mean, it was, he died for telling the truth and being righteous and, and, you know, he testified against the evil, evil, the wickedness of the world and they killed him for it. You know, I mean, do we have that in our society? If you, if you stand firm to certain morals, like you are ridiculed. I mean, like, seriously, it's like, sorry, I don't agree with you. Like, wow. What tolerance you have. You say tolerate, 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 but you don't tolerate someone disagreeing with your lifestyle. It's not like I'm telling you, like, it's just because I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't mean that. You know, like, we can't. We shouldn't be judgy. We really should not be judgy. But like, we, you know, we have things in our life that we believe. I'm sorry. I, I don't know what to tell you. I can't help it. Okay, here we go. Do not be surprised, brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brethren. He who does not love abides in death. Okay. Okay. Seriously, you're you, you're. Yeah, you're not going to live on. I mean, seriously. Okay, everyone who, who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our own lives for our brethren. Sorry. But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? And that's so true. If you can help someone and you say, well, bless you and hope everything works out and you don't actually help them. The the Bible, it's not saying like, it's saying literally, how does the love of God abide in you? It doesn't. It's not possible because it, the, the, the power, the kingdom does not consist in word, but in power. Okay. Remember that. All right, here we go. Okay. Little children, let us not love with word or with tongue, but in deed and truth. And then there you go. It says that. So in deed and truth, baby. Okay. We will know by this that we are of truth and we will assure our hearts before him and whatever our heart condemns us. For God is greater than our hearts and knows all things, okay? Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God, okay? And that's the thing. When you're really in the Word of God and you're really praying and you really understand God's will, your conscience becomes... It's like God just leads your, you know, you know, God, in which the Bible already says like God is, is written our laws on our hearts. Like, dude, he, we, people know, and, uh, you know, mainly in the West and, and even other places that you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised, dude. It's so amazing listening to testimonies of, of, uh, folks that have, uh, you know, become Christians out of Islam, out of Judaism, um, out, out of tons of st- cult stuff too and, ju- and just in general too a- dude atheist testimonies are awesome too uh there's some really good testimony if you want to seriously i know i've said this before but seriously guys do it actually do it go watch david wood's testimony david wood okay he's a great christian apologist he's an expert on islam and stuff too but like go watch david wood's testimony it's really good stuff okay god bless everybody i hope you have a blessed day god bless you and i don't say that because you sneeze in fact if you sneeze damn you to hell no i'm just i'm just joking i'm totally just joking but anyway god bless everyone i'll be here tomorrow for day 82 all right god bless and salute